Hello my soccer universe and welcome to another Serie A review. I probably start with two very obvious statements. The first one I want to get out of the way was another really really rotten week for Milan and this one really seemed to be kind of the bottom but you know with all the injuries and so on. Talk a little bit about Milan but they will not be the big story just that I'm a, as a Milan fan. Yeah, it was not a good down there they are hidden away. But on the larger picture, the obvious statement has to be, despite being crashing out of the Coppa Italia in a little bit embarrassing fashion, this week was just, a, or especially the weekend was just picture perfect for Napoli. Because every potential challenger that would have been remaining was just obliterated away. Uh, maybe not other little two fell by themselves, the two Milan teams uh, <laughs> losing in weird ways. You don't see any other team really challenging Napoli, except for Juventus, who they have beaten 5-1. But Juventus got hit with a major, major penalty that we'll talk about in this video as well, 15 points away. It is at this time really, really, really hard to not see Napoli winning this title. And we are just at the exact half a point of, of, of the season. But 50 points after 19 games is... They have pretty much the same record as Arsenal. Uh, they are one of the two most dominant sides in Europe at this moment. Uh, we'll see how it will go on in the Champions League. I wouldn't call them uh, one of the... Uh, they are probably one of the best teams in, in, in Europe, but I'm not sure if I would call Nap Napoli anywhere near being Champions League favorites. But yeah, a picture perfect week for them. And then despite getting knocked out of the Coppa Italia. And with all the things that have been happening, I think it's really best that we go chronologically. Uh, and yes, I will not mention the Super Cup, but not because Milan lost, because I, as I said in the Spain video, I do not want to give credit to a competition that is played in Saudi Arabia or sold to Saudi Arabia. Just to be a fact, Milan lost 3-0 to Inter. Yeah, great Inter, you won a super important trophy that you have been celebrating obviously too much. Start, however, in the Coppa Italia, where uh, just before that, and this is now over, over, over a week ago, Napoli played at home to Cremonese uh, and found themselves relatively quickly down. Napoli, of course, playing in their awful, so awful it might be brilliant Valentine's Day jer jersey, a full month ahead of Valentine's Day. If it wasn't for the kiss on the jersey, I actually think this jersey doesn't look uh, half bad. It actually looks quite good. It's the away way jersey is just the red version. So I actually do like that, that, that part. It's just uh, the design idea going in, in, into it. There was a lot of thought was spent on this one. And also Cremonese then jersey also looked odd. But you know, that, that aside. Cremonese took a lead. Uh, relatively early on in the 18th through uh, Piki and as I said um, Cremonese have been aside yes they have they have yet to pick up a win however they are uh, have always been on the more going forward uh, part of things than just whole holding back and hoping for a nil nil draw Napoli though turned around rather quickly within four minutes through Juan Jesus and Simeone uh, in the 33rd and 32nd and yes of course they were playing a second string squad um, and then actually uh, seemed to be in control without actually getting the knockout blow. And then a really, really weird thing came. We get a Zanimakia comes on Afena, and Afena Jan had come on a little bit uh, earlier. Those two combined to get an 87th minute equalizer. And honestly, it was not undeserved, but it was also not really, really coming uh, in the overall pick, 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 pick picture. Uh, and then it got even better for Napoli because uh, Ser Nicola got a yellow red bit of a rough one but Napoli had 20, 20, 20 minutes to find a winner and they were pressing because meanwhile 82nd Kim, Kim came on, Zielinski came on, then Ozyme came on right, right after the record. You really thought yeah Na Napoli is now going to just destroy Cremonese like they had just destroyed Juventus. No. Cremonese hang on and it goes to penalty pen 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 where all the penalties are converted except for the fourth one for Napoli by Lobotka and Cremonese move on. 
the next upset in the Copa, uh, which has seen a, a f- one big upset already with uh, Torino ousting my Milan, and now Napoli also out. So um, it seems to be a wide open comp- competition. One okay, a competition that Atalanta surely will like. Uh, beating Spezia 5-2 in a rather open game. Yes, it was 2-0 after 12, 12 minutes, 2-1 after 4, 14 after 26, it was 3-1 and then 3-2 at the half and then Hoyland, Ampadu on goal and, and so on. It was, and it was easy for Atalanta who, were in, who, who continued their nice free-scoring form. Uh, Lazio, the score and much uh, tighter than uh, you would Expect uh, 1-0 over Bologna, where, of course, Nisha Mihailovic was celebrated by both sets of fans. Uh, the, uh, the goal came through Felipe Anderson. And then Juventus against Monza was a, a surprisingly open uh, duel. Moises Kane equalizer was... Um, Moises Kane go-ahead goal was equalized by uh, Valotti. And then uh, it was a really open, up and down game that was well, was decided by Federico Chiesa uh, getting finally a goal back from injury uh, and Juve moving on. And everything seemed to be rosy at this. We knew there was stuff coming. Everything seemed to kind of rosy in the land of the Bianconeri. And then, and now we cut to that Friday evening came when the Italian courts, the sporting courts came down with a 15-point penalty when the prosecutor only asked for a 9-point penalty. Uh, now, this is from a case that was or this was already very, very close, and this is probably a part of why you is going to appeal. appeal is potentially has a chance of getting this revoked. Although the far the way I see it, the, I heard, is that the appeals process is so that uh, it has to, so they can appeal to the Olympic Concord Committee, who has, has to send the court, the, who cannot reduce the points deductions, but uh, they can say, okay, but we have to reopen the case. So it's a, it's a rather legalese, the whole thing. The thing is that uh, they got punished by for overvaluing player transfers uh, and basically cooking the books by just saying, you know, um, we swap players like they did with the um, uh, Pjanic uh, deal, Pjanic Arto deal with Bar- 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 Barcelona, where I'm, I'm, I'm not saying in this case, but uh, in other tri- transfers, where they overvalued the player that they sold so that they can actually uh, book a profit that was not really there. Uh, and they needed it because at the, they were investing heavily. You know, remember the Iguain and then R- Cristiano R- Ronaldo, they thought they are just a, a touch away from from the Champions League a little a little bit too greedy I guess and then um, Covid hit and everything else uh, it needed to be a lot of creative accounting to kind of keep everything uh, <laughs> at least on the surface uh, rather clear. Why did this come up again because uh, it was also a criminal investigation uh, where we will see more coming as well there's also an investigation of how the Covid contracts were not really all that kosher, you know, where they all said, ah, we're not going to take any pay cuts and, and, and so on. So there's a lot of happening in Juve land that uh, might be quite troublesome and the more trouble might, might be coming. That's why the whole board has already resigned and there's a new leadership at Juventus. So more is to come and we're not talking about FFP, but it seemed a little bit odd. And I do agree with most um, with, 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 with the sentiment that this was a reopened case and none of the other clubs got in there. However, the wiretaps um, clearly had them even stating, yeah, we really shouldn't be doing this, <laughs> but it's so easy. We can just add a few zeros here more, 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 more or less and we all look good. Now, why did it go from 9 to 15? From what I hear is that the judge said, we don't want you in the Champions League. Nine points, they still have a good, they still might make it in, in the Champions League the way that the league are. We need to hit them really, really hard that they are for sure not getting a Champions League. Although UEFA and Financial Fair Play might have something there as well. And then we also get, that's now the kicker, the uh, verdict on whether the Super League uh, was is was a valid uh, pro- property or not, where then UEFA could decide to further punish the teams that have been trying to get into the Super League. And of course, namely uh, Juve, Real Madrid and Barcelona right there. So uh, there's a lot to come, I think. 
The one thing I have to say that I have to give huge credit to uh, the Italian authority, authorities that at least they're acting. Yes, there's a lot of shit going on. And that it's again Juventus. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to com uh, want to comment on that because you were over over is, is I always say they're the Italian club, although I'm a Milan fan. But uh, Juve is almost synonymous uh, with Italy in many, in many ways, the most supported club. Uh, but at least in Italy, they're finding those things. Whereas I always have to figure, and I don't want to make it up, but I, I, I just needed to say, I think Barcelona have, have been doing equal big shit. But the Spanish authorities are always looking away, the same way as they did for Real Madrid years ago. That's the difference that they hit the big teams. And at least that's something that makes me look a little bit more positive onto it. With that, I think we have to see uh, the impact. And usually you don't see standings uh, just like that by me that I have to show it to. But I think the impact is really, really big. You see on the left side the standings where you see you were well went from third to tenth with the 15 point penalty. And in the expected standings, and that's what the um, process, what the judge won, 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 won chief, you will now fall out of the Champions League spots and go very well into the Europa League league spots, and they might not even they they might climb, climb, climb up there, but it's a really really big struggle to get into the Champions League spots. So this is what we're looking at here. Let's look into the the last weekend, which started out with a big win for Verona, who desperately needed another win. So a uh, 2 nil against Lecce, who had just almost beaten Milan. Napoli in, in the pouring rain in Salerno. I, I, I guess you know, this would have been a super atmospheric game uh, if it wasn't for the rain. You saw the umbrellas and stands amp empty, but that's a really a local der der derby where, yeah, Napoli had to work hard. But in the end, Di Lorenzo, just before they have an Osim and Air, I have to have and then Napoli saw it just through. Uh, side and also for Salen Natano after the 8 2 loss to Atalanta, coach Nicola got sacked, only to be reinstated two days later. Stories that can only happen in Italy. Um, I'm wearing Torino, who got a win thanks to a Mirancho goal at Fiorentina. Fiorentina looking also a little bit off at this uh, time. Then a very emotional uh, goodbye from um, uh, Viali with all the former for, for, for TT teammates. As some Dora take take an Udine, they lose at home. Sassolo getting a point, but Sassolo also not looking quite right. They actually might, they are looking in danger, but finally they stop their losing streak. And then Roma, without really convincing, also gets their three three points. Uh, Dybala assisting bo both goals, first of all through El Sharavi. Uh, really nicely played uh, attack just before they have, and right after they have, he assists Tammy A. Abraham, who runs on to goal. Really entertaining game between Juve and Atalanta. It's a perfect 3-3 draw. Why perfect? Because it's almost all lead changes. Lukman give Atalanta a very early lead. But Juve are back in, in the game and I really thought they should, should have gotten a penalty uh, before, the, before they got the, the, the Di Maria penalty that make it 1-1 and then uh, Milik heads one in and it's 2-1 uh, at the half. And you really thought that Juve actually had turned the cover, cover, cover right there and again uh, in the face of adversity, the rally, the, 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 the crowd and Juve will actually pull in a good, good performance only to completely fall apart in the first 10, 10 minutes of the second half with Mele and Lukman scoring uh, two goals and Lukman are in really, really good form. Uh, they are as, as well. And it, it seems like Atalanta again has the upper hand. Uh, the melee goal, which was assisted by Lukman, so with three uh, score, uh, scoring points, looked actually a little bit out of sight, but when, when we saw, saw, saw the replay and especially the line then, it was actually not. You will avoid defeat by Danilo getting an um, equalizer through a free kick. Uh, where everyone thought that the team the, the Maria will shoot and then probably could have potentially won it. But it was an end and entertaining game, but not everything is right in Juveland as we know now. The surprise for me is I thought that Inter, after winning this uh, ridiculous trophy, will come home and they will just take this and roll over Empoli. First off, why is Inter playing with yellow numbers? 
I guess it has something to do with the Chinese New Year because they suddenly also, also play with Chinese letters. If you play in China, you can use your names in Chinese. If you play in Italy, no. Even if your owner is a Chinese, there's, there I have, this is another thing that just irks me to the core. It was Skrinja who does not renew his count contract, who got two yellow cards, car cards in the first half, and all the good things that Inter had going for them were kind of falling apart. And then a young talent, Baldanzi, who had just come on, scores the winner for Empoli. And that was a big, big win for, for them. It was also, in disguise, good news for Milan, because whatever happened, Milan will stay in second place. Well, the worst happened. Uh, honestly, I turned off, off, off the game short, short before ha halftime. I knew that no Theo Nandas, who looked over, played the same thing with Giroud. It's just that those players, they have to play because not that the others are not live, living up to it. But I saw the lineup, and again, uh, the problem starts at the goalkeeper, where if Tatarajano, who has been great last year, I mean, he was part of that squad and he saved that penalty in the derby. So I don't want us to really be so negative against him. However, you never have the feeling that uh, he has full control of the box and he also makes the game slow. In addition, his reflexes slow down. And that was all on show kind of in the, in the first goal there that was scored. It was really nicely played by, um, by uh, Lazio. And Milinkovic Savic had a great uh, finish. However, they first completely confused the Milan defense, who did not defend this goal very, 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 very well, through all their mazy runs. And, you know, already on the back foot, doesn't look, look, look good. And then, yes, Tatarana has his hand on. And if you have the hand on, you can save it. So uh, it's not mainly his goal. It is his fault. In fact, I, I would say the fault is 90% at the team before him. However, he's a contributing factor. And then Tomori, best defender, who is so much in fights with Tato the whole time, also gets injured. Kia comes on, so you lose all the speed. Although I have, have to say there was a time when the Milan kind of were a little bit in the game. They could at least level the game. And maybe Lazio held a little, a little bit back. But then the third, 30 minutes, all falls apart when a shot from, from, from on the outside goes through Tatarajano onto the post, Sakania makes it 2-0. At that point, I knew this is not going to end pretty, and it didn't lose. And despite then uh, changes made, you know, Giroud, Messias, and Diaz come, come off, or Regis, Alemekas, they kept the on. Even Rebic came on later, but there was again two more goals for Lazio. It was utter destruction. And the only positive thing is, and we see it in the table, is that Milan remain in second place, and actually their record is not that far off from what they had last year. However, it was a much tighter league back then, although Inter had at, at times also a good lead in that uh, league as well. But it is just made for Napoli at the moment. Lazio in third spot. Will they make it back to the Champions League? Uh, that will be interesting. You see, it's really, really, really tight. Milan 38, Lazio, Inter, Roma 37, Atalanta 35, Juve 23. I, it's really hard to see them making their way uh, back. Uh, expected standings basically tell the story that, you know, in Napoli, Inter Milan, uh, Roma is still more high, high, high rate, but I think that it will be lots between Lazio and Atalanta because I don't trust Roma either. On the bottom, uh, again, it's Salentana, Sampdoria, Cremonese. We're not talking a lot about uh, Sampdoria. Beautiful jerseys, but uh, almost more trouble than Juventus uh, because they might actually get demoted more than just Serie B uh, if they continue this way. The ownership uh, situation has to be resolved there as well. Upcoming games, we have uh, the next round. As I look, it's Napoli-Roma. That's a pretty good one. Also, Lazio Fiorentina typically would be an interest. There's one Fiorentina will not be so bad. Uh, I am also looking Milan Sassuolo, which would be is a is a game that Milan usually have lost at home. However, the Sassuolo this time around is not so good, so I'm hoping uh, for a bounce back performance. But you know, um, it's not good because the derby is coming very soon as as well. I think this will be a this is a, this is now a really rough patch for Milan before they get uh, players back and maybe before maybe the Champions League starts. Um, and after that, we also and I forgot about it earlier. Uh, we also have the uh, quarterfinals for the cup. 
Inter, Atalanta and Juve Lazio are the standout fixtures there. Uh, the other two are more or less a little bit foregone conclusions, I would say. That was it from me from Italy. Please drop a line below if you want to add anything to what happened, whether it's Milan, the punishment for Juve, Napoli's run, whatever. Draw, drop a line below, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And yeah, I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.